G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and I'm really excited because this is the first video I'm putting up on my channel of me playing with my RT Games app, which has been developed with uh, my friend Rob and with the help of my community. You guys here on Draw with Jazza submitted so many uh, ideas and, and uh, random generation bits and bobs that we put together in this app. And the game we're going to be playing today is the character challenge. But specifically in the character challenge, uh, you can generate a de character design or a character scenario. Design being a, a character's visual output and, and type, the scenario being something a random character is involved in doing that's whimsical or hilarious or epic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate five character designs through the app, put them down in straw poll and get the Twitch chat to vote on them today. This whole stream was done on my Twitch channel, so make sure to check it out to uh, join future streams. And of course, if you're interested in the app, go check it out at jazzastudios.com slash shop or on the iOS or or Google Play stores. Character generator number one! An emo cyborg that wears a ninja mask who's wearing a black coat. Off to a good start. Bam! A company owner that has dainty little hands with really big eyes. <laughs> Bam! A lowly shopkeeper that came from the Victorian era wearing tiny shoes. Bam! A stretchy pirate who has a body part from a bird who's wearing sunglasses. Bam! A shy politician that has feathers instead of hair who has demonic features. Okay. And it's time to vote. I have put it to the Twitch chat, so we should be seeing those votes roll in. Oh, there they are. Look at that. Look, look at them move up and down. All right. And the winner is Emo Cyborg, not Emmy Cyborg, with a ninja mask wearing a black coat. That is the character I'll be designing today, randomly generated from my Arty Games app. I look forward to making this one. Let's get started. I start playing around with the first things that come to mind and obviously some of the first things that come to mind are an emo hairstyle and a ninja mask. And then I try and find ways to balance the, the three core aspects of the character's design. The ninja aspect, meaning the character is going to be a bit of a, a crime fighter or action hero of some type, but then also trying to find ways to bring in the emo and the, uh, the cyborg trying to pay attention to both though without letting it all get too chaotic and busy. I do this by testing around segmenting them in different areas. So having too much in the face that is both cyborg and then mixing an emo can be visually confusing. So in the end I opted to having the emo parts of the character centered around the face which is going to communicate the most and then having his arms be cybernetic limbs that clearly communicate the the robotic cybernetic part of the character. So I'm happy with the sketches I've played around with so far and the the features I really want to work with for the clothing and outfit design are uh, obviously we have a, a coat that we have to work with so I'm going to go with a big collar maybe have some badges on the character and a, a little studded belt and chain or something but I actually thought it would be cool to have a marching band coat underneath his big trench coat because that's going to sort of uh, draw a parallel to the marching band outfit that My Chemical Romance wore in their popular song. So that sort of plays on the emo part without him necessarily wearing a, a, a band t-shirt, like a t-shirt with a band name. It still makes him an independent looking, still emo cybernetic character. As I mentioned previously, I'm keeping cybernetic stuff away from the face. I'm keeping it almost entirely emo except the ninja mask because I've, honestly, if you mix too many of these character aspects in single areas, it just ends up looking like a mess. So I've got two areas in the face, emo and ninja mask. Then in the body, I've got emo and cyborg, and then it all sort of comes together in the character design that we've come up with. So I'm pretty happy with this so far. I really like this design here, but I'll, I'll make my tweaks and stuff, but I actually want the character to also be very skinny. So, so I have really thin, skinny jeans. Uh, so the character looks more like a, a sneaky character rather than a, a brutish beat people up character. So I'm going to jump straight into the final character design. It's going to be tricky because with, when it comes to color, there's going to be a lot of black and, and that whole dark emo ninja look is going to be quite desaturated. So we're going to try and squeeze some color in there as well. Maybe a bit of red here and there, some purple in hair highlights, things like that to try and make it pop so it's not too flat. 
When I create the construction lines for what will become my refined character piece, my construction lines are much lighter and uh, a little more refined than my initial scribbles. In particular, starting off with minimal details and just basic shapes and geometry for the head, the torso and the limbs. Very slowly but surely, I start to add some of the core features and the bits that poke out of the geometry more, like the collar on the jacket, the hair on the character, and then slowly but surely, adding, outlining, and refining the clothing and the outfit of the character and some of his features and details. Once I'm happy with how it's shaping up, I can get into the nitty gritty of the details. In particular, the areas I'm focusing on adding more detail are the face, especially where the eye is, the arms, showing off some of the cybernetic details as well. So we don't want to have too much detail throughout the piece, but just a few key areas which are more interesting. Once we're happy with how that's all shaped up, we can get into the line work and keeping things much more refined and smooth, occasionally adding some line shading, but only really in this case around the collar and uh, behind the hair, just to show uh, a bit more of a darker cast shadow on the character's face and around his neck. But other than that, everything else is just clean, smooth lines, and we're gonna come back later with color and make everything poke out a bit more. But the, the colors on this character are gonna be quite dark, so we don't actually need to worry too, too much about shading the character because most of it's going to end up being hidden under very dark clothing anyway. Once I get to the colour, I start off with the skin, which is usually where I start with characters, with my general go-to skin tones, but then starting to add some uh, slight reds and pinks under the eyes for that classic emo eyeliner blushed look. The hair I do in a base of a very dark grey and then leave the tips blank and sort of gradiate out uh, with different colours. And then at the very end of that, I add purple over top of the whole thing. So then it looks like we have purple tips and highlights in the hair. For the rest of the character, I basically go through using neutral greys as my colours and base, trying to mix it in. And it's very difficult at times because I have to preserve some white areas and bits of detail, which can be difficult to do in with markers, especially when you go back and do blending and stuff. But I've tried to do that throughout the course of the piece and uh, keeping colour to a minimal, but where I use it eventually, I want it to really punch out and lift the piece out of being too monotonous or desaturated. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, this is the finished result. This is my emo cyborg with a ninja mask wearing a black coat. I love how the end result feels like a character that feels like they were always meant to be like that, you know? <laughs> That's one of my favorite things about working with random character generations. Like even the generated character that we had that came second, which was shy politician, feathers for hair and demonic features. Like you might get that and think to yourself, that makes no sense. I can't make a character that would actually work as a legitimate character. But then you can build a world around it. You know what I mean? Like think maybe this character is a politician in a world full of demons and demonic characters. Their hair happens to be feathers or whatever. And it's just the norm. Like this is just a politician in a very normal demonic world. Like I just really enjoy that you can play around with the parameters outside of the random generated character to make something work uh, and in this case our emo cyborg ninja character we have a, a I don't know if they're a crime fighter or a villain but either way an aesthetic final design that I'm really happy with that feels complete so I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, this character design session and uh, I hope you enjoyed how, checking out how the Artie Games app works thanks so much for watching guys and once again make sure to join future twitch streams by clicking the link on the screen and in the description that's it for now, ladies and gentlemen, and until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for new content every week. If you want to support my work and get some goodies for yourself, head over to my store for archives, ebooks, digital brushes, video courses, and more. If you enjoyed this video, here's a link to another video you might like from this channel.
And if you want even more, make sure to check out all my behind the scenes action on my vlog channel, Daily Jazza. Draw with Jazza is proudly sponsored by Adobe. Join the creative cloud today and get loads of incredible creative tools like Photoshop, Animate, Premiere Pro, and other apps for your computer or mobile device. That's it for now. Thanks for joining the arty party and until next time, I'll see you later.